In this example, we're going to sketch the graph of this given piecewise function f of x so that we can then assess what's happening at kind of the breakover point in the domain, um, x equals negative 1. And so to be able to sketch a piecewise defined function, we need to look at each piece individually. Um, so when we're looking here at the first piece, uh, x plus 1 if x is less than negative 1, we're really talking about the left-hand side here. So we're really looking there as x approaches a negative 1 from the little minus sign there, with the little minus sign. Uh, when we're talking about this middle piece, we've got um, f of x equals 2 if x equals 1. This is really a point. And that point is the input value x equals 1 with the output value, the function value, y equals 2. And then the last piece here is the uh, parabola, the opening downward parabola, uh, y equals negative x squared if x is greater than negative 1. This would be the right-hand side. And so we'd be looking as x approaches 1, or sorry, negative 1 with the little plus sign there from the right-hand side. Okay, so that's what we are going to be able to read off of each one of these pieces here for the piecewise defined function, but we want to get the whole graph so that we can see what's happening. So the way that I um, graph piecewise defined functions is I look at each individual piece separately. Now that middle piece there is simply a point, and so we really don't have to look at that as a complete graph. We just know that's going to give us ultimately a, a solid dot on our final piecewise defined graph. But we do know that this top piece here, uh, y equals x plus 1 is a line. And so that's going to be um, a line that has the y-intercept positive 1, and it has slope 1 also. And so really it's going to go through um, the, the y-intercept there will be at positive 1, the x-intercept will be at negative 1. And so that would be the, the graph of the line. The bottom one, the graph of y equals negative x squared, well, y equals x squared is an opening upward, just standard basic graph parabola. The negative that's out front is the reflection that makes it open downward. Okay? And so that would be the entire um, graph of the uh, y equals negative x squared. So I graph the entire thing first so that then I can just take the part of it that I need. And so the part that I need here um, for the line is the part where x is less than negative 1. So x is less than negative 1 happens right there and we're going out to the left. So we're really only talking about open circle there and then out to the left. That's going to be my important part of the graph um, of that line. Now as far as the parabola goes, we've got um, the x equals negative 1 right there. Well that would correspond if we were to plug it into the parabola, the negative 1 into the parabola, negative 1 squared is positive 1 and then we've got the negative 1 out front. So we're looking at the point uh, negative 1, negative 1 so see, we're talking there for negative 1 as the x value, and to the right of it, x is bigger than negative 1 would be to the right of it. So we're really talking then about the right-hand part of this parabola, starting at the hole there at negative 1, common negative 1. So putting those two pieces together into a graph, along with the ordered pair that we have for the point, um, we can do that. We'll go ahead and mark the values that uh, we find important here. We've got the x value of negative 1. We can go ahead, actually that 1 up there doesn't matter so much. The x value of negative 1 is very important. We see that we have the hole there for the line, and so we've got the, um, the part of the line that we had already bolded. So we'll go ahead and copy that part over. Um, the hole for the parabola is at the um, point uh, negative 1 comma negative 1. So we would need that part. And we'll go ahead and take the part of the parabola that we bolded. And then the very last thing that we need to do is fill in the ordered pair point that we already assessed. We have, oh, I made a typo here. Let me fix. Um, it's if x is approaching, or sorry, if x is equal to negative 1. I didn't catch that before. Let me fix that here. If x is equal to negative 1, then we've got the point negative 1, comma 2. Okay, my mistake there. The negative 1 is the only place that is really the switchover place. Okay, so with that being said, we've got the point negative 1, comma 2. 
So here is the y value 2, and so we've got our solid dot there at negative 1, 2. Okay, so that's the graph of our piecewise defined function f of x. And um, now we can um, be able to assess this graphically what our limit would be, what our one-sided limits would be, so that we can then be able to answer um, what we can for the full limit. So as we are looking at this, we've got the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the left-hand side. That was from the line part. And so what we're seeing is from the left-hand side, we're approaching the hole that's really on the x-axis there. And so that is going to be 0. Okay. Um, from the right-hand side, so we've got the limit as x approaches negative 1 from the positive side. Um, that would be this part right here, the part of the parabola. And we see that it's approaching the, the open circle there that's at the level y equals negative 1. And so that would be our right-hand limit. Okay. Notice that these two things don't equal each other. And so since they don't equal each other, what we end up with is that the limit as x approaches negative 1, where we don't indicate the side, um, does not exist. So I'll just say equals d and e. Okay. And so when we're answering this final question, it says um, sketch the graph, use it to approximate the limit. Well, we decided the limit does not exist. Okay, And it said if the two-sided limit does not exist, describe the one-sided limits. And we actually already know that because we had to look at the one-sided limits to even figure out what the answer would be for the two-sided limit. And so we get those uh, right away. Notice that the other thing that we do know, but that they didn't specifically ask for, is that f of uh, negative 1 is equal to 2. Again, I may have spoken wrong. I definitely had a typo there at the beginning. But that comes from this um, middle part here, where we had the um, output value of 2 at the exact place where x is equal to negative 1. And so that gave us the point negative 1, 2. It gives us the function value of 2 for the input value of negative 1. Um, and so that's what we read off of this. And we got that graphically, and we'll learn uh, soon how to make sure we understand how to do this algebraically also.